Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. The Rock of Ages Study Bible. Uh, some people think this is the Pilgrim Study Bible from Oxford in another form. We're going to look and see if that's really the case. The Rock of Ages Study Bible. This is an extremely popular Bible. And, you know, uh, some of you would know better than this, but in searching for this Bible sometime back, it seems like I ran across another Rock of Ages Bible. So I think there may be multiple Rock of Ages Bibles out there. This looks like it may be Smithsonian and glued. I see the glue. It does have beautiful decorative headbands and tailbands. I do not see a ribbon marker. It is not gilt edged. It is pretty, you know, the gold really stands out. It doesn't have raised Bible or book bands. And uniquely enough, the uh, hardback doesn't stick out very much at all like, uh, I mean, like a tenth of an inch or so from the Bible block itself, which is interesting. So you open it, it does have this gorgeous presentation page. And it has a piece of a hard kind of cardboard, which is a spine stabilization page. And we'll see that if it's Smithsonian or not. Smithsonian, how you know is if it stays open in uh, Genesis. And so it does continue on with the presentation pages, hearkening back to another era where this was the treasured possession, still should be, of every person, every family, and uh, the main events in people's lives were recorded. So this is the seventh edition, 2018, Rock of Ages Press, the Bible and study notes you can trust. So it sounds like they're trying to be conservative, which is good. We'll see where this was done. We're kind of in a sense of race against time. What happens when we do these videos at a certain time, the sun in my back comes in and, and kind of blurs up the videos a little bit. Long uh, story there. It is Cleveland, Tennessee, which is headquarters of the Church of God. And uh, the Roman Road, which my friend Wally Beebe kind of, uh, I think, created that. Um, you see the tracks. And you can go to R. OAPM.com. Now, Wally and I talked about this a lot. I did not believe that, obviously. And uh, it's prison ministry. Yeah, so here's the thing. The New Pilgrim Bible, KJV Student Edition, copyright 2003 by Oxford University Press. Pilgrim Study Bible, copyright 1948, copyright renewed 1976-2003, three Oxford University Press printed and bound in the United States of America, which is highly unusual. Honor of Dr. Mr. Ron Jarris. I thought it was going to say Ron Jarrisy. Uh, and it's for prison. Now, when I sold Bibles at Berean, we used to sell a lot of Pilgrim City Bibles. I say a lot, but some. And uh, for what it was, and people really liked them for new converts. That's what they would give them for. So I've probably got a review or two on Pilgrim Study Bibles on here. So General Editor, Dr. Jerry L. Rockwell. I wonder if that's Norm Rockwell. I don't know. Or uh, the painter. Who is that? Norman somebody. Um, and then Lou Rockwell, who does the Libertarian blog. So it tells the... Uh, Board of Directors, Executive Directors, Dr. Terry Ellis, Dr. Ricky Dunsford has a table of contents. I'll show you the table of contents section here. Sister Waldron is a droit. She is the expert Zoomer. Sister Fran used to be the expert Zoomer. But she does way a bunch of other stuff at the church. 
So, and she had a little boy. So Sister Waldron became the videographer for Axe T38 Studios. Now, Sister Waldron does not even like that little. She was smiling real big when I was talking about the little boy. So then it has a little introduction, the features about the Bible, its author, 40 writers, one author, uh, types. And then it has a thing on the Trinity in here, which, uh, you know, that word's never mentioned in the Bible. How we got our English Bible, the coming of the English Bible, the King James Version. Um, King James Version is surpassed by none, in spite of the multiplicity of versions available, and there seems to be no sign of that flood new translations and ebbing. The King James Version has not been equaled, let alone surpassed. A combination of accuracy of translation, beauty of expression. I would agree with that. And then it's got a thing about the Old Testament. It does look really good in this, you know. I'd agree with everything. I'm just I don't see the Trinity in Scripture, but. Uh, Please do not uh, make horrible comments in the comment section about that. Uh, uh, Elohim means a strong, faithful one. Um, so here we go. Here's what it looks like. It's got a little introduction. We'll do some measurements in here in just a few moments of print size, margin size, size of the Bible. Obviously, we've been waiting with bated breath to see if it stays flat in Genesis. And it, in fact, does. So it must be my son. All kinds of stuff. Now, obviously, people ask me all the time and it's weird to me they're like well why would you use a bible that you don't agree with all the notes in i was managing editor of a bible i didn't agree with all the notes in and so you know my pastor taught us to be smart as a goose eat the food and spout the sticks i mean do you read the newspaper do you listen to the radio well i'm sure you don't agree with everything you hear on the radio you don't agree with everything in the newspaper. You listen to Sean Hannity. Well, unless you're Catholic, you know, if you're Orthodox or something. Oh, I mean, so you have to learn to, uh, <laughs> to discern things. You don't want to just inundate yourself with error constantly. Satan's a little G God of this world, and he does a great job spewing out lies. But and you have to buy the tree, sell it not. But, I mean... If you're going to use Bible study helps, whoever they are. I mean, I've got good friends that are apostolic, that are evolutionist, and have horrible views of Scripture and errancy. And what do I say? I mean, so let's see. This is uh, about 0.75 inches to right at the top. That's great. The side, man, it's like 0.7 inches there, even in the gutter. It looks like about 0.625 inches in the gutter. At the bottom, not a whole lot. Maybe a quarter of an inch at the at the bottom. Um, and so it does have in-text headers. Um, you know, King James Version. I was looking for a pill crow to see. Yeah, it does have pill crows, which are the paragraph dividers, the little flags out to the side. It's very light print. Let me just share that with you. Um, We'll get to how big it is. Here's a good example of an introduction in Isaiah. It's a very well done Bible. So you can get these off eBay. I think you can buy them like by the case. Really inexpensive. And they're hardback. Now a lot of prisons require paperbacks. Like they don't do hardbacks. Because they feel like it can be used as a weapon. We want every prisoner to have a Bible. That's a very good thing. Oh, and so let's get the print size thing out here. See if we can see what print size is. It's kind of a larger print, but it's very light. Print size is by far not the only story. Boy, it looks maybe nine and a half to nine and a three quarters size print. Now, the introductions are much deeper. Now, it is not red letter, which is something fine as date-like, 
Now, he, you can get a Dake Bible in red letter now. You used to couldn't because he was like, it's all the words of Jesus. It's the word of God. You know, Revelation 19, he comes with a name written, the word of God. So if it's all the word of God, why would you just pick out? Red lettering didn't start till Louis Klopsch in 1898. I think that was the first New Testament, 1900 for the whole Bible. And uh, the word uh, baptized. Since there's no English word for the Greek baptizo, the translators brought it into English. Um, yeah. Yeah. It actually started in 1066, if you go to the OED. And so, a lot of study notes. I said it's not red letter. It is red letter, because there's red letter. Did I just skip over the red letter? I guess I did. Here's what the red letter looks like. So I go into this entire soliloquy how about Dake and not red letter, and it is in fact red letter. Sorry, I just, I just skipped the red letter. In Atlanta, there was a radio personality years ago called Red Neckerson, and so, for obvious reasons, so we always talk about people who like red letter, they're Red Letterson, Red Letterson. All right, so it is red letter. Let's clarify that once and for all. There's Shekinah. Boy, there's a lot of debate here on YouTube about the word Shekinah. So I asked this Christian rabbi a while back. Long story there, how you can be a Christian rabbi. Um, here's like a subject index. Really good, good print. Because the Bible says don't call anybody rabbi. So he doesn't like to be called rabbi. I'm just saying that by way of experience explanation. He's been in rabbinical school for five years, even though he's a Christian. And uh, long story, how Kabad got him in there and all this. Um, and he said, oh no, Shekinah is a Hebrew term. Totally okay to use. A lot of people think it's a Kabbalistic term and it refers to the female part of God. So if Adam was created in the image of God and a woman came out of his side, they would say then God has to be male and female. No, but and then law, we won't even go into that whole thing. I've, I've got it in my notes to do a whole video. But look at the at the uh, concordance. It's huge. The only thing I don't don't particularly like about this concordance, it kind of goes back to the Cambridge school of writing out a lot of the verses, but it doesn't have the words you're looking for bolded. But it's still there. And the concordance isn't terrible print. Like a lot of concordances. I think it's a seven point print. Let's see if we can. Ba -da -da -da. Yeah, six and a half maybe. That's pretty small. That's pretty big though. So, um,. It's got a good gazetter for the maps. So 247, that's yeah, real big. So the concordance goes from 1845 to 247. So it is 202 pages. The new Oxford Bible Concordance of the King James. That's probably a good concordance too. And it does have these classic Oxford maps. Which, of course, does not have the nation of Israel going through any water in the Exodus, which is weird to me. But almost no maps do. I remember when I was at Thomas Nelson's headquarters and showed the map people that, they said they had no idea. They were just shocked as, as anybody. So, uh, boy, great. I do like the Oxford maps. And it looks like there's a bunch of them. Like, it says there's only nine, but some of them are two pages, and it has one spine stabilization page you can also use to write on. And that's it. Have we measured this thing yet? I'm thinking we haven't. So it is 9.2 inches tall, which 9 by 6 is considered a mid-sized Bible. We'll compare it to the Cambridge large print text only in just a few moments. And then... We'll see how wide this thing is. Baptize you in the name of Jesus. There we go. No. Um, it's 6.4 inches. And uh, 
confidence? It's right at 1.75 inches thick. So for a study Bible, that's not uh, big for a study Bible. Like I'm looking at like the Thompson chain large print and all this. And it's, it's not big for a study Bible. We'll do just a couple of quick comparisons. So here's the Cambridge large print. You can see the Cambridge large print is smaller, but not enormously smaller. And then one of my favorite study Bibles, the King James Study Bible Second Edition, will show you. And it's a little bigger, but not enormously bigger. I mean, just slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch and uh, thicker, but it's going to have more information. So I can see, you know, I, I like a lot of the information. I like the conservativeness in here. But check out our other Bible reviews or other translation reviews. We have a playlist with, called Bible Reviews. And uh, join us daily. Check out our other videos here too. God bless you. We love you. Read that word. Live it. Bye-bye.